Hey guys, it's Cheer. I am getting ready to get on the Continental Divide Trail and um, I'm officially halfway done with the Triple Crown and so I haven't done a gear video in a long time um, since I finished the PCT really. So I thought I'd do a little refresh on my big four. Not that a ton has changed, but um, just wanted to give you guys a refresh. And I know a lot of you like the big four items specifically. Um, so anyway, while I'm waiting around to get on the CDT, uh, I thought I'd make a quick video. I'm sorry this isn't more professional. I didn't realize. I thought I'd have time before I left to do this, but I'm just going to do it right before I get on trail. So I'll show you the view. I'm at the KOA in Steamboat Springs right now. So let's talk about my tent. It is a Big Agnes Copper Spur UL1. This is a new version. Um, I had to buy a new one after about 4,800 miles of using my first one. So um, it has a lot of miles on it. Um, one of the tent um, poles broke. So I thought it was this, and the zippers were not working anymore. So I think a lot of sand got in there and stuff. So I tried cleaning it, but it's just a little much for my tent. So <laughs> got a new one, same model. I was toying with the idea of getting a different tent. Heard great things about the duplex, but um, I really like having a freestanding tent because I've been in um, quite a few situations where there was high winds, um, high like a lot of rain. And um, I was just really glad to have that extra support, but I know a lot of people don't care about that. Um, they're willing to go through some maybe sleepless nights on those um, in, during those times. So I don't wanna deal with that. And I also wanna be able to pitch wherever I want. So I do have friends who use um, non-freestanding tents where they have to use their tent poles. And while they save weight, sometimes they, not sometimes, a lot of times, they have to be careful where they pitch. So, um, you know, when I'm hiking with my friends who have a non-freestanding tent, I'll usually let them choose first, like where they want to pitch because I can pitch pretty much anywhere. Um, so yeah, I love, you can see there's the poles. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of other things I love about this tent. So, um, I will go into those in a second. Um, and I will show you, um, what I'm talking about as well. So one of the things I really love about this tent, uh, I, sorry, my feet, <laughs> um, is this section here that's kind of extended from the ground piece um, which is pretty much like waterproof slash rainproof and then the mesh is higher up going to the top so what i like about this is <clears throat> when it's really raining a lot like let's say it's really raining and there's like mud and stuff being splattered up i won't get that in my tent because this is here so that's one thing i really love about this tent and it goes all the way around um, so I found on the PCT that was really, really helpful in many situations. The stakes are also really great. Let me just pull it out here. <laughs> yeah, these stakes are really awesome. They're improved from the previous model. Um, really easy to put into the ground. Um, this is a little bit more difficult because it's gravel because um, we're in like a KOA. But um, these are make it so easy to um, get into the ground quickly and even not even using rock sometimes. I can just do it with my finger and wiggle it around and it goes down pretty easily. I also really like the vent system on this tent. So the vent, which is behind me <laughs> from the inside, um, is really great because it reduces condensation. Um, so that was one of the deciding factors of me getting this tent again. Um, and as far as specs, this tent is about two pounds. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit heavier than the non freestanding tents, but um, I will happily carry the weight if that means I get a good night's sleep without my tent falling on my face. Next up is my sleeping pad. I have a Thermarest Neo Air X Lite. So I bought the woman's version of this. Um, it's about 12 ounces and the R rating is pretty high. It's 5.6, which I need because I sleep pretty cold and I'm always afraid of being too cold on trail. So um, 
So far it's been pretty good. I've only been using it for, I don't know, maybe 300 miles. Um, but it's been performing very well. It's a little crinkly. It's a little noisy when I toss and turn. But other than that, that's really my only complaint. Um, otherwise, it's pretty great. And before this pad, I used a Climate um, Static V. And it was a four season pad, um, which was really great. I think I got it for like 60 bucks on Amazon. It was on sale. Um, so the price was right. This, this runs more around like 179. Um, so a little bit steeper of a price here, but um, it is it is a bit lighter. So, um, you know, where it's lightweight, you have to pay a little bit more, but um, so far I think it's worth it. It's more comfortable. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna show you the full length product right now. Here it is close huh? as you can see it's a little noisy but there's a lot of great things about this sleeping pad so on to my quilt I love my quilt it is an enlightened equipment quilt the Enigma design um, 850 fill down, I think that's the way you say it. Um, and I got a regular um, size. So it's about 24 ounces um, and it's just, so I'm in it right now. <laughs> it's just so warm and amazing. Um, I got a custom one, but um, it wasn't that much more expensive than like if you would order just what they had in stock. But it takes, um, gosh, maybe six to seven weeks. Um, to receive it. So luckily I had enough time. <laughs> um, but I love this quilt. Like I said, it's a 10 degree and I am afraid of being cold. So um, I usually use it with a um, sleeping bag liner. So that gives me down to zero degrees that I'm good for. So yes, definitely recommend the quilt. Um, my gosh, I don't even know how many miles I have on this. I think I have over a thousand, um, maybe like 1500 actually. No, I take that back. I think I probably have close to 2,000 on this thing. So still going strong, great loft. Um, and yes, highly recommend this quilt for a lightweight option and a warm option. Lastly, my favorite piece of gear that I have is, I brought it in my tent with me, <laughs> my Hyperlite Wind Rider, and it's a 30, it's called a 3500, which is a 55 liter pack. Um, I love this pack. This is my second one. My first one is still going strong, but I thought I should get a new one now that I'm halfway done um, with this, the Triple Crown. So my other one's my backup pack. <laughs> Um, but yeah, my first one had 4,800 miles on it. Um, the side pocket zippers, um, went out, which I could probably fix. And the bottom, uh, with all that wear, um, is a little messed up, but there's nothing else wrong with the, the first pack I had. So pack number two, <laughs> um, I love this pack because it's waterproof. It's lightweight. Um, it is just under the white version is just under two pounds. The black version is about two pounds. So there's two different colors you can choose from. Um, and yeah, just so durable. The waterproof thing is great because I don't have to stop and put a pack cover on every time it rains. And on the PCT in 2019, that was great because it would rain all the time, even in the desert section. So while other people were stopping to put on their pack covers, I could just keep hiking. And, um, that adds up over time too, um, when you're hiking a long trail. So, uh, again, just, this is my ride or die. I always say this ride or die piece of gear. Um, and I highly, highly recommend it if you're um, into long distance hiking. Okay. I 
thought I was done talking about the pack, but there were some other things that I realized I should have mentioned. So um, the Hyperlight Wind Rider is mostly frameless pack. There are, um, I think, two metal spurs that are in kind of the frame <laughs> that you can take out if you want it to be lighter, but I decided to keep them in. Um, so it's mostly frameless. You can make it completely frameless as you, if you would like. Um, and regardless, you do need to be a little careful about how you pack it. You can't just throw everything in there and expect it to be really comfortable, like some uh, packs with more of a frame. Um, so I just had to learn how to pack it. So, um, you know, like the heaviest things in the bottom and towards the back, no heavy things on the top. I've tried that, it hurts my neck. <laughs> um, so you just have to be careful about how you, how you pack it. Um, and, I'm trying to remember what else I need to mention about it. I think that was it. I just wanted to, cause some people um, say, oh, it's not completely frameless and they're right. It's not completely frameless, but just in general, it is kind of a more frameless pack compared to um, others on the market. And I know this is kind of like a brief overview, but if you guys have any questions, leave them in the chat or in the comments. Um, I'll get back to you. Um, if you have any questions about the big four items that I use um, currently on trail. And um, I plan to do another one or maybe more in-depth gear reviews when I'm done with my triple crown. So stay tuned for all of that. Um, but yes, please let me know if you have any questions about this brief overview of my big four.